We feel privileged to have with us our team of dynamic leaders. I invite Dr. Mona Mendonca, Head of the Department of History, along with her co-coordinator, Mr. Manoj Fernandez, Assistant Professor, Department of Business Administration, to accompany the dignitaries as they occupy their designated seats on the days. The dignitaries on the days are Reverend Dr. Praveen Martis SJ, Principal St. Aloysius College, Sister Jacinta de Souza, Principal Father Mullis Nursing College, Mangaluru, and Chief Guest of today's program, Dr. Jay Prakash Gowda, Associate Professor, Department of Electronics, and the Guest of Honor, Dr. Alvin Dessa, Registrar, St. Aloysius College, and Reverend Father Vincent Pinto, Finance Officer, St. Aloysius College, Mangalore. Thank you. Kindly be seated. Now, to all the dignitaries on the days of the days, and the directors, HODs, deans of various blocks, all the members of the faculty, administrative staff, and to the students, I wholeheartedly welcome for the formal event of Christmas celebration 2023. It is an immense pleasure to introduce our esteemed chief guests for today's celebration, Sister Jacinta de Souza, the principal and professor at Father Muller's College of Nursing, Mangalore. She secured the first rank in BSc Nursing from Bangalore University and further pursued MSc Nursing at Father Muller's Nursing College, Mangalore, earning accolades under Mangalore University. And she has also secured an MPhil in Nursing at Mahe, Manipal Deemed University. She served as the principal from 2003 to 2011 and resumed this pivotal role in May 2017, continuing to contribute significantly to nursing education. An accomplished author, Sister Jacinta, has published works like Dictionary for Nurses and Procedure Manual for Community Health Nursing. She has also been a prolific contributor to national journals. As a dis distinguished member of the academic community, Sister Jacinta has organized, attended, and presented in over 100 seminars, conferences, and workshops. Her role as a peer team member of NAC Assessment Committee underscores her commitment to academic excellence. Today, we are honored to have Sister Jacinta as our chief guest. As the festive spirit fills the air. I invite Father Principal to warmly welcome Sister Jacinta de Souza with the presentation of a sapling symbolizing growth and new beginnings. Thank you, Father. I now request Father Principal to similarly extend a green welcome to Dr. Jayaprakash Gowda, signifying the joy and strength found in togetherness. Thank you, Father. Let us warmly welcome her and invite Ms. Sister Jacinta to the to the stage to share a special Christmas message with us, drawing from her wealth of experience and wisdom. Good afternoon, respected dignitaries on the days and all of you of the days. This is a beautiful moment, though I was very apprehensive and scared when I was asked to give a message for Christmas by Father. I said, a person like me may not suit to people like you who are experts, much mature, much intelligent, and skillful than me. But then Father said, we are all simple people, so please come. And uh, that is why I am here to wish you all a holy Advent and a grace-filled, peace-filled Christmas and the year 2024. In our uh, institution, tomorrow we are having Christmas Day celebrations, and uh, Sir is going to be our uh, guest of honor. And uh, 
Every year we bring out a Christmas bulletin. And this year I happen to be the editor. And in my editorial message I wrote, we cannot pronounce the word Christmas unless there is a smile on our face. Christmas, it always brings a smile on our face if we pronounce it properly. And that is true. Christmas brings joy on everyone's face. Christmas brings joy in everyone's face and a smile in everyone's face. Apparently, when we see in the world, Christmas is more of fun and external celebrations and uh, the interior is sometimes forgotten. And the joy of Christmas easily vanishes because externals are not permanent. We all know it. I want to focus on only three points. And among them, the first point is, this is from the Christmas point of view. The first point is, there was no room for him, that is for baby Christ, in the inn. There was no room for him in the inn, I-N-N. I remember a short story that was told by one of the faculty member yesterday as he shared the Christmas message when my students in the college celebrated the Christmas. And that goes like this. In one of the big five-star hotel, lot of noise and lot of celebrations, decorations, dancing, music, and everything was going on. And there was one simple person who got in to the same hall and asked, what's going on here? And someone answered saying, can't you see, we are celebrating. There's so much of music, dance, decorations, lights, and we'll have a good dinner too, everything. He said, what is the celebration? I am not able to find out what is the celebration really. And uh, the person said, it is the birthday celebration. Birthday celebration, whose birthday celebration? I'm not able to identify the person of whom you are celebrating the birthday. And this person said, the birthday celebrant, we have kept him at home because he doesn't like the celebrations. He's at home, we are celebrating it here. This is what happens many times in Christmas. Christ in Christmas is forgotten. Christ in Christmas is forgotten and then we celebrate. There is no room for him in the inn. When we have room for everything and everyone in our life, many times we have no room for Christ, no room for God in our lives, in our inn, I-N, inside. And he is always left out. Make place for Christ, make place for God in our lives. And naturally, he will change the entire life of us and he will make it beautiful. The second point is silence. World is full of noise. Even if I am talking to you, my mind is having so many thoughts. You are listening to me, your eyes are on me, but I am sure so many of us are thinking so many things in our mind. There is no silence around, and as a result, we have no time to listen to the voice of God who is knocking at our door's heart and say, open the door, I want to come. Behold, I stand at your door and I knock. You have to open from within, and I will come, and I will stay with you. I will eat with you. I will inspire you. I will walk with you. I will strengthen you. I will heal you. That is only in silence, if I open the door of my heart to my God, surely he will make a difference. Christ was born at midnight when it was complete silence. He will be born in our hearts when there is silence, when I'm able to get into myself, keeping aside all the distractions of my life and silence, teaches us life's meaning. And the third point is the human being, the shepherds. Christ, when he was born, the first message 
that was announced was to the humble, simple, transparent people who lived and were ready to, you know, who lived, who took care of their sheep and were ready to give their life, put their life at risk in order to care for their sheep. Only people who are simple, humble, transparent will be able to meet Christ in their lives. They will get inspiration. They'll be able to see Christ. They experience the peace of Christ in their lives. I am delighted to wish each one of you once again a grace-filled Christmas. And I wish to say, ultimately, Christmas is you. Christmas is you and Christmas is me. Christmas is you when you decide to be born again each day and let God into your lives, into your soul, into your mind, into your work. Christmas pine is you when you resist vigorous winds and difficulties of life. The Christmas decorations are you when your virtues are colors that adorn your life. The Christmas bell is you when you call, gather, and seek to unite, not divide. You are also Christmas light when you illuminate with your life the path of others with kindness, patience, joy, generosity, and all that it goes on. <coughs> The Christmas angels are you when you sing to the world a message of peace, justice, and love. The Christmas star is you when you give the best of you have, best that you have, no matter who it is. Christmas music is you when you conquer the harmony within you. The Christmas gift is you when you are truly a friend a brother or a sister of, for every human being, your neighbor. The Christmas card is you when kindness is written in your hands. And the Christmas dinner is you when you share your bread and your hope to the poor man who is next by your door, next by your side. You are, yes, Christmas night, when humble and conscious, you receive in the silence of the night the savior of the world without noise or great celebration, that God who came to save us from sin. May God bless each one of us that we be Christmas to one another. May God bless us all. Thank you. Thank you, sister, for your enriching and humble Christmas thoughts. We are honored to have amidst us Professor Jayaprakash Gowda, a distinguished veteran scholar with over 30 years of expertise in teaching, currently serving as a professor in the Department of Electronics and also holding the crucial role of NAC coordinator. Moreover, being the coordinator of NAC fourth cycle, Professor Jayaprakash's remarkable tenure has propelled our college to the pinnacle, achieving an A++ result. Without any further ado, let's welcome Professor Jayaprakash Gowda to share a special Christmas message with the gathering. It's a great honor to address you all on the occasion of Christmas. I wish each and every one Merry Christmas and Happy New Year 2024. On this occasion, I would like to pass the message that is service of mankind is service to God. Means that selfless service for the cause of humanity is as important as worshiping to God. Universal religion, as suggested by Swami Vivekananda, was a new ideal as universal love and universal brotherhood. He advocated equal value for all the religions in the world. To him, all religions are not really contradictory, but supplementary to each other. Every religion has its own soul, ideology, teaching, but constitute one whole. Everyone will be bind by the thread of love and progress 
of all. Vivekananda's idea is truly global vision can form the foundation for peaceful coexistence of all in the whole globe. And one can dream that entire world is one family. Every individual has a soul which is infinite, assuring infinite possibility and capacity of all to become great and good serving for the betterment of the society. Be steady, avoid jealousy and selfishness, be obedient and eternally faithful to the cause of truth, humanity and your country and you will move the world. Gandhiji had always uh, religiously stayed by the principles he believed in for the betterment of humanity and for fighting for the rights of the oppressed and the deprived. Gandhi did not believe in man-made division of caste and religion. Core aspiration of all the religions should be to bind people together rather than divide them. Lord Krishna has stated that dharma is a guiding principle through which a society is to be governed. Apparently, there is no distinction of humans based on other aspects other than moral ethics. This teaching of Bhagavad Gita had greatly influenced on Gandhi. Gandhiji viewed God and religion as two completely different aspects. He believed that God is an ultimate truth. And he also believed that the true essence of God is nothing other than love and truth. So primary aim of a religion is to help the poor and the deprived. A single act of help and consideration towards them could easily equate a thousand rituals performed. All the teachings of Islam are based on two basic principles, the worship of God and the service of mankind. In its followers, Islam inculcates the spirit of love and respect for all human beings. By serving human beings, on one hand, they please God, and on the other, they achieve spiritual progress for themselves. Coming to the assistance of others is, in essence, an acknowledgement of the blessings which God has showered upon man. It is that person who helps others who has something more than others. Serving others is a hallmark of true Christianity. The Bible details uh, Jesus Christ's dedicated service to others and encourages his followers to do the same. The Bible is also shows that helping other people serves God and yields blessing. So the saying service to mankind is service to God means by helping others we are doing our duty to dharma. This is because God loves all his creatures and wants us to help each other. So there are numerous methods by which we can serve others, we can help them financially, physically or emotionally. We can also help them by doing things for them that they cannot do themselves. So man's service is noble and we should all try to do, the, do it as much as possible. It not only benefits others, but also brings us closer to God. We can also serve to mankind by protecting the environment, mother nature for future generation. Because God has created earth for all creatures and lives of eternal. So God is invisible, but service is visible. And serving uh, God is uh, in service is good for the betterment of the society. So thanks for the listening. Thank you, sir, for your valuable words and festive greetings. Leading an esteemed institution like St. Aloysius demands a resilient leader with a visionary outlook as it progresses to greater achievements. Reverend Dr. Praveen Martis SJ, our principal, displays an outstanding commitment, wholeheartedly endorsing each novel initiative with unwavering dedication to the welfare of our faculty and students, embracing the true Aloysian spirit. May I now invite Father Principal to give his presidential remarks. Respected Sister Jacinda de Souza, the chief guest of today's Christmas celebration, Dr. Jayaprakash Gowda, the guest of honor, 
Dr. Alvin Desa, the Registrar, Reverend Father Vincent Pinto, the Finance Officer, Dr. Mona Mendonca, the Coordinator of Christmas Celebrations, the Directors, the Deans, the Heads of the Departments, the Teaching and the Non-Teaching Faculty Members, and my dear friends. On the outset, I would like to wish you all a grace-filled Merry Christmas 2023. This year's Christmas is uh, quite different. Rather, as sister said, uh, silence. That we have in exam, we are in exams, and most of the faculty members are busy evaluating the papers, and there were some of them holidaying, and others were already planning for the holidays, and the non-teaching faculty were here. It was quite different. Otherwise, it is a noisy kind of a place every year. During the time of Christmas, there are students around, there are cribs around, and students are having at least three, four celebrations. The faculty members, again, the interface celebrations, other celebrations. But this year, we have got only one celebration, and that too, not just before Christmas, but much before Christmas. That is on the 15th of December. I think this is the only such day maybe coming here in the history of St. Elvisius institutions. And for this day, we had a lot of fun in the morning. We began with a lot of uh, uh, activities and enjoying, and that's the celebration of joy. I think all of us experienced, and what I liked most was the way this uh, crib was made here. All the directors, along with their faculty members, bringing these lambs, and we bringing Mary and Joseph, and also the babe, Jesus. And that's how the small, beautiful, meaningful, symbolic crib was established here in the midst of all of us. And that's the celebration I think all of us are in. And Sister Jacinta gave us a beautiful message on this day about Christmas. I said, when you say Christmas, then you always smile. And that's the way that we celebrate. And that's the way we begin to serve others, look at the others, and give that human dignity and respect to the others, and remain silent, and also there should be place inside. When you said that, I remember the symbol of an egg. If you break the egg from outside, it is destroyed. If the egg is broken from inside, there is a life. I think that's all about Christmas, that we are looking at from within, how we prepare ourselves for the God's birthday. The Christ's birthday, Christ has come into this earth and we are celebrating every year with joy because he's a small child. He came in the form of a child. And when we, our children also are here, John's son is here and that's what I see, uh, Bhavya's uh, son and other children here around. When the children are around, there's so much of joy and everyone loves a child. And today we are invited to see God in the face of a child. And that's what I think is a celebration of Christmas for all of us. There's so much of joy there in a child, and everyone loves a child, would like to play with a child, and we can see that innocence in a child, and we could see God in others. And that's the beautiful way that Dr. Jayaprakash Gowda also brought out a message of love and truth, of God coming into this world. And for us at St. Elvisius Institutions, our house, for example, for our, one part of the Jesuit house is displaced. We are not there in the house. We are all here and there. I am in the guest room of uh, the college. The rector has come here. And some of them have gone into hostels and some other places. We are finding a place. In a way, uh, for us as Jesuits in the house, in the community, is a displaced Christmas this year. We are not there, but then we are everywhere finding ourselves. And this has helped me a lot. I'm here from last eight years. Half of my luggage is gone. So that's the best thing that happened during the Christmas season. Otherwise, I would have waited for a transfer. Maybe whenever there's a transfer, that's the time we unload all the things and then move to another place We can't because we can't carry so many things. So this time, since the room has to be vacated, half of my things were also taken out. In a way, that was a great symbol for me personally to see that they're all given out given out to the people around, and uh, our attenders came and cleaned my room and helped me out, 
and a lot of things were out. And I was peaceful. I got only now very little luggage. And that's how I'm going back to the place once things are back again. So that reminds me about a Christmas for all of us. We've got so many things with us. I and mean, this is a time also to give. Like Santa Claus is a symbol of giving. So the son who asked uh, the dad whether Santa Claus really exists. And the dad said, if you are ready to listen to the truth, I'll tell you whether he exists or not. And the son says, yes, I've gone, become old enough now. I want to know whether Santa Claus really exists. He says, Santa Claus is only an idea. It's only an idea of giving. Only when we give and give, and that's how God came to this earth, to give of his own self. And that's why we are here at St. Aloysius College. This year has been a wonderful year for all of us. We began with the beginning of the year with the NAC grade, and we are all excited. We all came together for the first time uh, to have a picnic together, enjoy together. And when that uh, excitement was just getting diminished, we got also NRF rank out of the blue and extremely happy. And then we got the minority certificate and things went on. A lot of joyful events this year. But next year, there are a few more joyful events to come. We are waiting for the university. Like last year, we are hoping that this year also in the month of January or maybe before that for the Christmas itself, that we may have the joyful news of that and many other things to follow. So always we are hopeful. When there is a Christmas, we are always hopeful. I got three important things to say when we celebrate Christmas. One is the inclusivity. The God has come, the Christ has come to this earth to embrace everyone. So that's why we are all together. That inclusivity is that nobody is left out. Everyone is taken care. And that's why God has come to this earth so that he can embrace every one of us irrespective of where we are and what way we live and what we do. But he is there for us as bringing all of us together. Second is the diversity. We go all over the world. There's so much of diversity, but then there's a unity in God. God embraces all of us, and there's a unity in that. And thirdly, there's a solidarity. Dr. Adarsh Gowda, as, uh, Jay Prakash Gowda, as well as uh, Sister Jacinta, beautifully spoke about the Christ came and was born in a poor manger, the place where nobody was there. And that's where I think we are called to be in solidarity with the poor, with the marginalized, with the last and the least and the lost. So that is where we embrace them and celebrate Christmas. So though we may not be here on the day of Christmas, most of us, let us celebrate in heart. St. Elvisius is a family. We are a family of all of us coming together to do something very special. And this family has gone on for 143 years. And we are moving into the 144th year. And that continues to be. And this beautiful family was embraced by all the faculty members, the, all the stakeholders together. That's why it has gone on, making a contribution, making a history on this hill. And it is our responsibility at this time to take it forward. May the Christ, the babe, give us this grace during this Christmas to embrace many more challenges, many more things, and taking this family together to inclusively and with diversity and with solidarity move with one another so that we truly joyfully celebrate Christmas and also we come into the new year 2024 on the at this juncture I once again wish you all a Merry Christmas and also wish you a blessed and also graceful and happy new year 2024 thank you God bless you Thank you, Father, for your didactic message filled with the festive greetings. As we bring a wonderful gathering to a close, it is time to express our gratitude for the hands that made this event possible. Let me invite Dr. Mona Mendonca, Assistant Professor and the Head of the Department of History to express her words of acknowledgement with the gathering. A very warm and a pleasant afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, dignitaries on the days and of the days. I stand before you with heart filled with gratitude for making this day very special. First and foremost, I would like to thank Sister Jacinta, the chief guest for the day, for being here and have known her for past few years. 
and from every association with her, the only thing I have learned is how to handle power being very, very simple. I have seen that, sister. And thank you so much for being here and giving us a beautiful message, the value of silence. And uh, to give a break to the outside decoration and giving more importance to self, being humane. So on uh, behalf of the management and each one present here, sister, I thank you on behalf of everyone. May I now request Father Principal to give away a memento as a token now for love and appreciation to our chief guest. May there be a huge round of applause. We also have with us the guest of honor, our very own Dr. Jayaprakash Gowda, Associate Professor, and who's been the NAC coordinator. Thank you so much, sir, for being here and for giving us that lovely message. Perhaps the punchline of this celebration, that is, God is invisible, but service is visible. So on behalf of the gathering here, thank you so much for being here. I now request our registrar to give away a memento as a token of our love and appreciation to Dr. Jayaprakash Gowda. Let's put our hands together. We also have with us our registrar, Dr. Alvin Desa, who's always been with us, supporting us, and being proactive for all our activities. Thank you so much, sir, for being here. And I'm very happy to see Father Vincent, not just being part of this celebration, but also being very active all through the day, though a person with silence, but always been on our back, sort of a support, uh, a moral support rather. Thank you so much, Father, for being who you are. This event wouldn't have been complete if I don't thank a couple of people. Very specially, I thank all the heads of every uh, department, and especially the block heads, the directors, for being here, for being part of this beautiful event. All the deans, the HODs, and the faculty members, thank you so much. To make this program a success, definitely there are a few invisible hands. And if I have to name a few, definitely the topmost contribution is been from Father Royston for planning out a wonderful prayer service. And he's got a bunch of students who really helped him out late in the evening to make those beautiful lamps. So thank you, Father, for making the Christmas more meaningful. I also thank our non-teaching staff for giving that beautiful uh, prayer service that was followed by the carol singing. I thank Mr. Henry Sir, as well as Madam Jacinta for that beautiful uh, performance you had. Meanwhile, I also thank our students for giving that beautiful performance. I thank uh, Madam Sahana and Ashita for training our students. I especially thank Godwin Sir for all that work he's been doing. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, without forgetting, I would love to mention this very special name of Alita, you know, who's been doing a great job. So thank you so much, Alita, for putting up a very big show. And we also have with us um, Mr. Doctor Anup Vegas, who took care of the entire stage management. Thank you, sir. Roshan, sir, thank you so much. Um, I think I'm done. And yes, finally, my co-coordinator, Mr. Manoj uh, Fernandez, whose our Duyoha has been a talk of the town these days because together we are able to put up good programs. So thank you so much. Uh, so wishing you all again a uh, Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. Magadumme, Shiksha Ketara, Vrinda Davaru, Illi Bandu, Indina Karakrama Kenivu, Bahala Preeti in the Bandidira Hago, Yella Chatur Gilgenivu, Nima, participation on a Kotidira, Yella Paravagi Nimigatanya Vadagalu. Thank you so much.